the thing with swim run is that you can finish last but still have an amazing time and feel like a winner. <laughs> Tide Boys, a swim run podcast. I'm Chip. And I'm Chris. And welcome to episode 39 of the show. On this week's show, we have the Martin Scorsese of swim run hype films. If he added more explosions, he could be the Michael Bay of swim run hype films. He could already be the Ridley Scott with all the sweeping aerial shots. And a Christopher Nolan of cinematic IMAX style thing and that has exhausted all my you almost went film blank director there. yeah <laughs> film I, only, director. I only have one left the steven spielberg oh, well, of, yeah. of drama of action and adventure he captured the jurassic feelings of catalina <laughs> <laughs> yeah you obviously don't know who we're talking about but we're talking about rasmus ludinius he is a filmmaker and he's essentially um if you've ever watched a youtube video at 2 30 in the morning where you're geeking out about swim run it's probably one of his videos so we have him on the show to kind of peek behind the curtain um, as to how these hype videos are made that we all enjoy and uh, and watch repeatedly. So more about that later on the show. Absolutely. Now into a training update. Chris and I were feeling feeling like we, we were back in a training two solid weeks. We had the dark swim run the weekend, you know, last weekend. And then here we are, more fires in, in Northern California. So the, the air quality has has stifled our our adventures and our exercising, our outdoor activities. But we are still going full steam ahead, training for Odyssey Swim Run Austin, which is on November 8th, 2020. So we were lucky enough, we got a couple swim run practices in uh, before the smoke rolled in back in. But but here we are, and hopefully we'll get another break pretty soon. But we're happy to get out there for a a couple weeks. It was like kids in the playground for the first time. Yeah. It's like everyone outside. I don't care. <laughs> outside. And it also wasn't 100 degrees, so that was nice. Too. Yeah, that was nice. So for shout-outs this week, we're, we're shouting out uh, Pitt from the Netherlands, uh, or as it's called in Spain, Los Países Bajos. Oh. I don't know if people knew that. It's sort of really funny. I learned that from watching the World Cup when I was like a little kid. I'm like, that's how you say the Netherlands in Spanish? Um, he's a fan of the show and was cool enough to, to fill us in about um, a swim run event that he did in the Netherlands over the weekend, which we'll talk about later. But, yeah, I just appreciate him reaching out and being a fan of the show, and thanks for the support, Pitt. Thank you, sir. Now on to our weekly Feats of Endurance Award. Cue the horns now. Now bow, this... Bow, bow, bow. Oh, yeah, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you're going to do the other horn. Okay. Oh, I was going to do I'm the sorry. real one. We could do this one, too. We'll bow, add bow, it bow, a... bow, bow. <laughs> Now, this is something that we're just like, well, we should just get this out of the way now for the feats of endurance. And when we say feats of endurance, I don't think there's anyone who has come to mind more often than uh, the, the one and only Mr. Low Tide Boy Award winner, Marcus Barton. He did a 24-hour adventure race with, I believe, a mountain bike, a canoe, trail running and hiking and orienteering. Mm-hmm. Was there any other... I know it was a kind of a thing, but, you know, congrats. Yeah. You know, no, he just rolled out of bed and looked like he did it there. <laughs> but uh, most, most people would be ending up in the coffin at the end of that 24-hour adventure race. So congratulations, Marcus. And if you're wanting to get in and see what Marcus is doing as well as everyone else in, in the Low Tide Boys Strava Club, be sure to join that and be part of the Kudos Fest there. Yeah, we have over almost 130 members, which... Whew. I mean, Again, we we always how? Say, yeah how I mean we always I'm I'm committed to giving everybody kudos, but it's work. It's, it's like any time I have a free moment, I gotta go in gotta there go and catch and up, or else it's too much. And we've actually found that to be kind of a nice little community place for low tide yeah. boys fans or just fans of swim run in general. People asking about kind of shoe recommendations. Yep. Someone's partner dropped out for a race, so so that might be a good place to check out if you kind of want a more of a like. You know, what does everyone else besides the low tide boys think about topic X, Y, or Z? Yeah. On to this week in swim run. So we heard about a couple swim run events this past weekend that they all look pretty pretty cool. And we just wanted to give a programming note. As more events start popping up as COVID restrictions lessen, um, we're going to have a harder time getting them all included in the show, but we're going to do our best. You could definitely help us out 
just like Pitt did, telling us about mm-hmm. Swim Sport Netherland, which took place on Saturday. Um, the, it was the third, year, er, the third year of the event. It sold out with 175 participants at three That's distances. The, obviously, there wasn't a lot of elevation on the course because it's Netherlands, but it looked like fun was had by all. Um, and it was great that they had distances to accommodate um, sort of different skill levels. Um, and, of course, it was funny. Their website had this tagline, which it's, like, so obvious, but it's pretty good. It says, you swim with your shoes on and you run in your wetsuit. <laughs> And that's it, dot, dot, dot. So it pretty much sums up the sport. There you go. You know, if you want to know about swim run, you swim in your shoes and you run in your wetsuit. Another event that happened, that this one, I'm just going to say, Chipper, I'm just going to, we're adding it to the bucket list that's oh. already ridiculously long. It was the Epic Blue Swim Run Finale Ligure, which oh. took place on Sunday. It's located in the Italian Riviera on the Gulf of Genoa. I mean... Sounds yeah. like a good place to yeah, take looked, a little staycation after that. It looked pretty that. amazing. It looked, looked pretty, pretty amazing. Um, so, yeah, that one's on the bucket list. In uh, a little bit more of a bummer news, but then also happy ending kind mm-hmm. of, uh, Atala Uto was canceled during their, during their race week, basically, due to a permit being unexpectedly pulled. So, um, you know, whoever snitched, snitches get stitches. Yeah. But Michael and Mats, Mikkel and Mats were... were Obviously, super frustrated as the rest of us. But the swim run community kind of came through and still made it a special weekend. Our friends at Wild Swim Run had a bunch of ladies out there on Saturday and, you know, casually followed the route. Uh, and then the f- good folks at Ombul Coaching, Nicholas Ramirez and his crew, had a large group there on Sunday on the course, which is pretty awesome. And finally, everybody was able to get into the action to support some pretty cool causes with uh, the Arc Sports Dark Swim Run virtual race, which we partook and we were, yes, I we think... Did. Uh, one of over 200 folks. I mean, it was individuals, yeah. So it was like over 200 participants, which is pretty dope. Do we need a race report episode now? <laughs> <laughs> it'll, it'll be a short one. Um, but yeah, like I said at the beginning, I'm sure we missed some events, but you can always send us an email, lowtideboys with a Z at gmail.com, and tip us off. Yes. On to other updates around the Low Tide Boys universe, swim runiverse. <laughs> Uh, Odyssey Swim Run Austin, you know, we're, we're obviously doing that. They were kind enough to share a discount code for 25% off your entry. So you can join us in Texas for some swim running, running, cliff jumps, barbecue, donuts. You can get, you know, the hipster Portland Yeah, I'm donuts, actually already thinking that we might need to bring a ton of donuts just to have like a donut kind of taste a donut. off. Wait, we, we're, we're bringing in... I mean, I'm just, I was just Product? thinking about it right now. So, like, Krispy Kremes or something? No, you know, when we get out, go to go to town, pick up some, put out voodoo, go to that other place. Oh, our, our, <laughs> our, our, maybe it's a pirate donut shop. Yeah. Uh, but code Low Tide Boys gives you 25% off there. You're going to want to join us in Austin. It's going to be fun. Now, again, if you remember a few months ago, we had Andy Blow on, the Precision Hydration co-founder, and he was properly properly kind enough to give us a discount code. He sort of reactivated it for us. So, again, not we're not too original with our product codes here, but Low Tide Boys, again, saves you 15% off your order at Precision Hydration. Uh, we have been using that ever since we kind of got our sweat test. You know, Chris, no, I know Chris, he's a 1,500 man. I'm a 1,000 <laughs> guy myself. Um, but, but we've been using that in both our training and everything there. Now, if that wasn't enough, Precision Hydration has given uh, the fans of the Low Tide Boys another 15% off code for the Science of Endurance Hydration Training Peaks online course. Woo! Yeah, so I started Let's this. Let's hear this. I started this, and it's pretty cool. It basically is breaking down sort of the science behind precision hydration and how to, like, basically you figure out what you need figure to do for you. Out. Once you have your sweat test, once you have this. I mean, it, it's been – I'm about halfway through it, and I had to, like, put it down because it's like you can't skim this. There's actually a lot of really good intel. Interesting. So you can use the code PODCAST15 to get oh. a 15% off discount for that. Cool. And don't forget, if you haven't heard our episode with Andy Blow, the co-founder of Precision Hydration – that's a great one. There episode 25. Back. Episode 25. Thank you. And we also have our new shirts out. So we have three new shirts, and those are both on our website, and we're handling all the shipping and all that stuff there. So hopefully it'll be a little bit cheaper for everybody and get there a little bit quicker. But we have the standard issue 
shirt, which is a Navy shirt with white Low Tide Boys logo. And then we have kind of our inverse 2020 exclusive shirt that is just happening this year only. Uh, you have a pink shirt with a blue Low Tide Boys logo and then a blue, like a royal blue shirt with a pink Low Tide Boys logo, which I'm actually wearing right now. And they're, the shirts are soft, comfortable. Yeah, they're, they're good shirts. And, good uh, shirts. you know, yeah. Buy one if, if you want one. Yeah. The you, holidays you are coming rock, up. If you want to show your low tide pride. Low tide pride. Um, so, yeah, we should just get to this interview because it was really cool. As you mentioned, we have Rasmus Ladinius on the show. Um, it was really great to sit down with him and kind of learn about his journey, both as a filmmaker, but then also like kind of how he got hooked up with Atala and started making working on their race films and basically took over the directing and producing of these things. And it's, it's just a really interesting kind of peek behind the curtain for something like we mentioned at the beginning. For a lot of people, the way they learned about Atala exactly or Swim Run were from video. his videos. So it's kind of cool to just kind of, kind of, I mean, I, I think we were kind of being like fanboys a little bit. He he was because it's like we just enjoy these movies yeah. so much. But I was so into like when you think about oh, if you're training for swim run, the way that you think about things. Okay, we're talking about oh, precision hydration. I got to figure my hydration plan. I got to do my training. He's right. thinking the same aspects, but about the film and how he's going to capture things and what how he's going to approach it and what he wants to like it to lay out in his head and just him talking about that. Yeah. And it's just like, you can just so crazy. He's like like, such a, he's an expert. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not giving anything away, but for the world championship, we're talking boats, we're talking bikes, we're talking running. He's doing like multiple vehicles to get to all these. It's insane. It's insane. But anyway, we think you guys are going to enjoy this. It was really great to have Rasmus on. Um, We, Make sure you check out the show notes because he actually curated a list of his favorite films that he's produced for Atala. So you want to check that out if you're not familiar with him. Top five. You know, check those out and yeah, enjoy this one. We did. Yes, we did. Indeed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so with us today, we have Rasmus Ludinius who is the director of film production for Atala, or you could refer to him as the chief of Stoke, the chief hype man, the purveyor of awesomeness. He has essentially worked to produce pretty much all of the Atala uh, movies that come out post-events with drone footage, all sorts of amazing shots, and really... Highly action-packed videos. Action-packed. And we're super excited to have him on the show. So welcome, Rasmus. Thank you very much. You're too kind. <laughs> well, you yeah. know, we, we love these movies. And I think for a lot of people who have either stumbled upon Swim Run or were actively looking for Swim Run content, I think it's pretty safe to say that, you know, you're responsible for producing a lot of that content that Atala puts out. So we wanted to kind of take it all the way back, sort of like, how did that start? Obviously, you're a filmmaker, but how how did you hook up with Mikkel and Mats and and kind of start doing this stuff? Uh, actually, I'm born and raised on Ute, uh, that oh. is the birthplace right. of uh, Swimrun. Um, so I grew up uh, there, and um, I have been aware of Atila since the very beginning, since the original bet. Uh, okay. But I didn't get involved until 2015. But I certainly knew about it. Uh, Not that like I was engaged in it, uh, but we talked about it each year. That now they did that crazy thing. Then when they swam and they ran from Sandham to the and we and I used to talk with my family how cold the water must be and and stuff like (laughs) that. Like oh, these people are crazy. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. These people are crazy. Um, but, you know, when the original bet was made in 2003, uh, I was just 12 or 13 years old. So, and I didn't do any, I hadn't started with my film career there then or something like that. So, so I didn't have any thought on it at all. But I always looked at the, the movies that were made uh, back then. And uh, the whole thing actually started for me in, 2014 when my sister and her partner decided to do um, swim run Uta that was the qualifier for the world championship at the time and it was their second year as a 
qualifier. I think before that, you know, it was the world championship and a couple of other races, but nothing that much. So my sister was doing the race and I, um, I brought my still camera with me uh, just to take photos of them. Uh, but uh, when I did that, I got hooked on the, on the whole thing uh, and uh, immediately saw what it could be. And in 2014, I already worked in movies and films and television and stuff like that as a freelance freelancer. And uh, I really wanted to get involved because this was my home island and everything like that. And it was just at the beginning when Swimrun was beginning to explode or whatever, take off, grow wings. Um, so uh, I contacted Michael uh, and asked if he was interested of having me doing a trailer kind of um, for um, oh. for the next year of Swim Run Uta. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, Atelier already had a media crew um, that was led by uh, Matthias Forchel and they did great stuff. So this was just, can I do something on the side? So that's how it started uh, with him agreeing for me and a couple of friends to do that. Wow, that's pretty cool. I didn't know. Now, my my thought was that you were like the filmographer at one of their weddings or something. And they're like, hey, you do great work. <laughs> Would you want to shoot a swim run event? Yeah. <laughs> but that didn't, that's not the case. Wow, it's you literally, you saw it from when you were growing up. You saw a swim run from when you were growing up. And you you didn't quite realize the magic until your, your sister did it. That's, I, yeah, I really exactly. Like that. And I didn't... I didn't watch the finish line or anything on the earlier races. I just knew that it happened, but actually I didn't care that much. But then I just, I was just aware of it. But when my sister did it, I saw what it could be and what it will become. Yeah, it's kind of funny how that happens. Like it's, it's, I lived in New York City for a long time and, you know, New York City Marathon Day was always kind of one of the worst days of the year because you couldn't get anywhere and had zero interest in doing it. And fast forward years later when I became a runner, um, and went back and did it. I was like, I can't believe I never paid attention to this thing. It was just so yeah, amazing. Exactly. Yeah, such an amazing event. So, so you start working with 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 Atala, and you produce this first trailer. So, what happened after that? Obviously, I'm assuming the response was awesome. And the the, the, the yeah, the kind of. Uh, I'm I'm a bit ashamed of that first thing uh, me and my friends did because we didn't know uh, how fast the race actually was mm. um oh. so we uh, we were way behind at all times and uh, we didn't know how to shoot it or anything so uh, there are a lot of things in that early trailer that that i don't like but but at the same time it's nice because one of the fun things we did that was that we didn't have a deadline for it so so afterwards we uh, remade every sound in the whole film. So we went out to a lake and we made like splashes with a floor mop and we (laughs) threw logs in the water and, uh, and run around (laughs) briefing in the microphone and stuff like that. You were doing uh, uh, Foley work. So we did a whole atmosphere of sounds and I still use those sounds today that we recorded back then. Love it. Wow. That, I mean, this is like, I feel like, uh, it's like Walt Disney pulling back the curtain on like, you know, how he <laughs> yeah, how exactly. Snow White was drawn or something <laughs> like this. That is really cool. So yeah, you mentioned a little bit and you know, doing the race is hard enough, but having to film and capture the event, you have to be faster than the fastest people. So how yeah. obviously you get to use a you know, like a, a golf cart or some sort of vehicle to help you, but sort of I'm really curious, so to for whatever race it is, you you can pick whatever race. Sort of, what's the normal process, and who's who's on your team? Like, what kind of equipment? I know you have a really cool drone that we've seen out a lot, especially at Catalina when we did that. We saw the drone there. So, yeah. kind of, what's your if you're assigned a race by Otelo, who who are you bringing with you? What are their jobs, and kind of what's that whole process like? Yeah, so usually on the World World Series, we are two people who are responsible for the for the film and that 
travels from Sweden to the race location. And then we usually have a local drone operator who has all the permits and uh. stuff like that to use the drone. And uh, depending on the race, it's all kinds of uh, transportation that we use. Uh, it could be anything from running yourself to having a quad or a boat or a, or a motorcycle and stuff like that. And uh, usually uh, in, on the race, we switch. Uh, so the race might start with a car and then we go to a boat and then we switch to another car and then we run. And <laughs> so it's a, it's a whole thing to put together for each race. And it's different from each race as well. Uh, Ute, for example, you can, you can take the car almost anywhere, but uh, on other races like Cam, you have to change all the time. How many, how many races have you shot for Ottila at this point? I counted this morning because I knew <laughs> I, I, oh, oh. I, I should talk with you. And I, I come up to 18. Wow. Um, That's a lot. Yeah. Um, uh, but, but I haven't been in charge in all of those because from the beginning, I started out as an assistant because after I did that first trailer, um, the next year for Ute Swim Run, 2016 they needed an extra photographer so they asked me if I was interesting interesting and the funny thing there is that I'm not actually a photographer myself uh, when I do films I usually am the director and the producer uh, and I usually have my own friends who who does the photography for me. Mm -hmm. uh, but I really wanted to do this. So I lied and I said that I, I know how to handle a camera. I can do this. Well, we'll make uh, sure that Michael and Moss don't hear this. Uh, uh, and I was just hoping that no one would notice and they didn't. Well, they might know now. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I'm confessing it now. Yeah. Um, uh, because, you know, I, I know how a, a camera operates, but, well, yeah, you know, absolutely. the practical things are doing it like which button to push and and which way the focus ring turns and stuff like that i wasn't sure of yeah and it must be really nice as as a really creative person and a director and a producer to work with a company that truly understands the value of your medium like otolo yeah. from day one it seems was 100 percent, 110 percent bought in about video was a way to amplify yeah. their message and how what's yeah. it like working with somebody that really wants wants the best that you that you have yeah Atelier has been great from since the very beginning uh, at producing um, all of their videos um, and it's just uh, the you know uh, I've been an assistant um, for a long time and I, I have learned uh, the trade from everyone who has had the gig before me. Um, and they have all been phenomenal. Phen phenomenal. Uh, I can't pronounce that word. It's a tough uh, one. They've been great. Yeah. <laughs> They've been really good is what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exact exactly. Um, so I have had the privilege of learning stuff. And while at the same time I have, you know, developed my own way of how I want to uh, make these films. And it has taken some time to get there. Uh, and I have lot, made a lot of mistakes on the way. Yeah, well, that's, you know, I feel that growth sort of happens to those kind of learning areas or opportunities. I mean, if you never made a mistake, you know, that would be... Right, yeah, like like we don't recommend anyone listen to our first Low Tide Boys podcast episodes because <laughs> they're kind of <laughs> embarrassing to listen oh, we, to. Oh, yeah, um, we, we had a trailer that we did before that yeah, before we recorded anything, we're like, oh, hi, we're going to be talking about Swarm Run kind of thing. And yeah. we listened to it. We're like, yeah, let's reshoot this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's the same thing, thing, thing for me. Uh, you know, uh, if you look up the earlier films that I made, I just, oh, man. But it's always like that. Yeah, I, I think that's true. But, you know, I think one piece of it that it's really remarkable that Tripper was kind of touching on is that um, what Atala and you know, the, the, the films have been able to do is now something, you know, growing the sport is now something that is essentially imitated by Every any, other, any race yeah. director in the sport that's really trying to do something great. I mean, you look at the Rockman movies, those things are yeah. amazing. 
Swimming in Portugal is putting together some cool mm-hmm. stuff. Breca, um, I mean, I, I I'd say that you're kind of responsible for for kind of getting that medium to be almost like a requirement if you're trying to have a good race. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I actually like. I don't know what was before, if, to be honest. Uh, I haven't looked back in the history of, of uh, other races like Ironman and stuff like that. I just have uh, Atelier as my my whole, you know, reference uh, from before. And then I, I have think for myself uh, what I want to uh, change and stuff like that. So now you're sort of being the head or you're more on the directing, the the visionary piece of it. Do you sit down with you know the, your your partner that you're doing the the shoot with or whatever and kind of plan out? Okay, we're gonna take the first pack and we're gonna film them to here, and then we're gonna take a dirt bike or whatever, and we're gonna go over here to catch them when they come down the hill. How much sort of course planning and knowledge do you, does the film crew need to have to capture all these like? action-packed moment a lot and it's hard uh, it, it's a lot of improvise we can talk about catalina uh, for example since it. you were there because that was the first race ever for atelier in the u.s mm-hmm. and uh, no one knows how you should do it and where to be and what's great what what is the greatest place to be as a filmmaker you know so uh, when I get to Catalina, I just sit down with Michael and Matt and they tell me, like, essentially, ah, I think you should be here and I think you should be there. Mm. Uh, and I look it up on, like, Google Maps and try to find, like, you know, this uh, 360 views. And I try to decide what I think will be interesting. And then I look at... You know, Atelier always put out this um, information with uh, times and distances. How fast is the fastest one and how yeah. slow is the, is the slowest one and stuff like that. And uh, from there, I try to make out, is it possible to get to this place <laughs> and that place in time? And what do I need? What do I need to get there? Do I need a boat or do I need a car or whatever? Uh, and then you make a plan and hope that it works and usually it breaks like <laughs> after 20 minutes because something happens that you have not anticipated and then you have to uh, improvise the whole thing from there. But uh, hopefully you have prepared that well that you can improvise. And I think that's the key. It's it's not that dissimilar from the racers. I mean, literally, yeah, exactly. Chris and I have a plan set out for Catalina and, you know, within... Uh, on the, the the run lake too, if someone trips and you know twist your ankle or something, that's an issue right. that you got to deal with and, and improvise sort of off that. So that's that's a really interesting sort of. There's a whole parallel race, uh, but you guys are carrying uh, cameras and, and equipment around and not paddles yeah. and buoys. Um, a lot of the shots you get are really, I find them to be a little bit unique because it is it feels so immersed in the action like embedded embedded in it and i think yeah. that's kind of what chris is talking about is when there's just something about these videos that you've obviously been able to like find that thread and really pull on it and 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 make it become more prevalent in your videos but yeah. y- you feel when you're watching it that you're right there and yeah thank you is it i'm sure that's I, I imagine that's probably what you're going for, but um, <laughs> <laughs> it's not an accident, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. But are you are you getting in a wetsuit and like going up to your waist in water with your you know five thousand dollar camera and everything, or do you just kind of know the right angles and everything to make it look? How do, how do you get such an immersive looking shot or experience? Yeah, uh, I've been thinking about that and. Um... Uh, I think from my perspective is that I'm not an athlete from the beginning. Uh, I'm not an athlete even now. Uh, And my background is from film school. Uh, And I have done a lot of short films and stuff like that, dramas with written dialogue and stuff like that. I'm not an action guy at all from the beginning. So on paper, I'm the wrong guy for this job. Uh, But I think I have learned from my background to uh, plan shots and uh, make shots that feel cinematic or something like that. Um, So 
I'm trying to um, have a pacing that's very similar to uh, how a short movie might get made or get edited. You know, like hearing um, you say that makes a lot of sense because, you know, the second you said dramatic, it's almost like, well, yeah, obviously you're not like an action sport, like, oh, I'll take it to the extreme thing, but it feels like it feels like you're there and you sort of feel the emotions and sort of the vibe that everything that's going on. And I think probably even though it's not um, maybe a natural fit, I actually think it works really well for these videos because it really gives a sense of like the community, the emotions, the, you know, the highs and lows that I think uh, probably makes it as dynamic as it is and as compelling as it is. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, obviously you're probably going to say that you're a, you know ashamed of all of them but which which video would you say was like the one where you were like okay i think i've come up with this formula that makes really that makes it really compelling was there like a race that you did where you're like oh yeah that's i i got it i figured it out yeah yeah uh that was the world championship film from last year okay oh, um, nice. Because that actually was the first time I was in fully in charge of the whole oh, okay. uh, <laughs> movie. Uh, I have been in charge of a, a lot of race, but it's always been in... A, you have always uh, collaborated with uh, other people and stuff like that. But this was the first time that Michael said, okay, this one is yours. You do what you like. I trust you uh, wow. with what you're making. And one of the things I was afraid about about the World Championship movie was that my dream was to have a movie that didn't have any interviews at all. And interviews had been kind of a main thing in these race movies since mm-hmm. the beginning. Yeah. And I was very scared to take them away uh, because it's easy to make a movie that's more like a music video rather than a story. Uh, right. yeah. But I wanted to try this. We have an expression that goes like, show, don't tell when you're making movies. Um, mm-hmm. so when you have inter- interviews where people goes like, oh, it's so beautiful here. And you have a shot of a beautiful archipelago, they kind of kill each other in my opinion. So I wanted to have, I wanted to make something that spoke for itself. Uh, and also if you cut out the interviews, you, um, you get rid of the language problem. Uh, because yeah. a lot of uh, athletes that are racing, you know, they are from France or Germany or the US or whatever. And uh, maybe they're not uh, comfortable in English and stuff like that. And when someone talks in, a, in, in English or, or French or something, uh, you get thrown out of the experience. Mm-hmm. Um, so for the World Championship movie, I decided I want to do a short film, ex- essentially. Um, that uses traditional Hollywood editing and has longer shots than uh-huh. usually. Uh, because I remember from my first year, you, you have your film camera and there and a, a team comes running towards you and you hit record and they run past the camera and then you hit record again and it's over. Uh, and then you get home and you get a shot that like, three seconds long i know <laughs> uh, and and uh, it might be great but it's just three seconds so my main goal for the world championship film was to i want to have longer shots and slower editing and i want to have clarity about what's happening in that shot so each shot should have like uh, you should know that okay this is, is a transition transition this is happening here and every shot needs to have some kind of uniqueness to them so that was my goal and then once the race started I just hope to achieve it and uh, on the world championship me and my teammates we had like a an angel watching over us because we just we just made it happen uh and it was magical actually it's yeah. one of my best filmic filming experience i have ever had had to be honest wow, wow that's great it just it, everything kind of unfolded right in front of you like exactly how you plan sort of thing and it just if you needed the perfect lighting or the perfect whatever it just happened 
Well, it was a good, yeah, it was exactly. A good and I was trying it. difficult things like running forwards but filming backwards mm, uh, yeah. and stuff Oof. like that. And it's extremely hard to do without a monitor and and anything like that. And I decided to try that, you know, on the leading teams, <laughs> and you only get get one shot at it succeeding, and I did it. So uh, I'm very proud of. Yeah, and they're uh, they're running at a pretty good clip too there. So you have to yeah. you have to have your your. You can't be wearing your flip flops for that one. You got to have your sneakers. <laughs> yeah, on for exa- that. exactly. I think uh, to go back a little bit about what you were saying about restricting the interviews, I specifically remember this video. I don't know if it was the one, the world championship video, but it showed just the finish line and it, it showed people's emotions and you sort of did interview them, but it was just them finishing and the their emotions or their actions right after crossing the finish line, whether it was a sigh and falling on the ground or hugging your partner yeah, or elation, relief. Yeah. And like all these different emotions were being captured, but there was not one interview or like, how did it go kind of thing mentioned. Yeah. And I thought that was so powerful. And then, you know, you had uh, Helen and Isabella um, or Helen riding Isabella across the, the finish line was always <laughs> yeah. a, a great one there. But um, yeah, I mean, just really, uh, magical. Do you think that that kind of comes from your quote unquote more kind of traditional filmmaker background? I know you've done other short films. I some were even in the uh, a film festival. I saw. I actually watched that one. I never is the English translation, but what's the Swedish? Um, yeah, yeah, Haraldri in Swedish. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think it's from that background. Um, that I have that. And it's also for me important to have the sound quality up as well. Uh, so it's like you hear what you see and when they cross the finish line, you have to have that applause and stuff mm-hmm. like that and someone shouting and mm-hmm. and trying to emerge, emerge everything. So it's like um, audio B-roll kind of. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. I mean, not it, just music and and pictures. It's yeah. funny because I watch these and I'm just like, oh my god, this is amazing. But I, like, just I feel like we're peeking under the hood and kind of getting in a, a sort of the theory behind it, which is really, I know, it's I'm... really interesting to hear. Now, now you've been behind the camera, but um, a couple of weeks ago, you actually participated in your first swim run, the final um, fifteen, the final fifteen in, in, in <laughs> Utah. So why don't you tell us like? you know what what made you want to do the race and and how it went yeah uh i did um i actually got it as a birthday present from from Ötila and uh, my sister as well um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know because the world championship was cancelled and they didn't have any budget to to do the final 15k as you know filming mm-hmm. um so so we signed up to to do that one, and you know it's it's a bit embarrassing because you have done this eighteen times before as a filmmaker, a and suddenly experience. you're the one who puts on the wetsuit and uh, and the paddles and the pool boy and stuff like that. <laughs> and uh, the thing is uh, that I don't, me and my sister, we we actually don't know how to crawl. When my sister did the uh, Ute swim running back in 2014, she did breaststrokes and she told me, I'm going to do that now as well. Uh, and I said, I'm going to try to to crawl, like ugly crawl. Um, but uh, I think I'm not able to do it as well, but uh, I'm, I'm going to try. And we knew that we were... We will not do well on the swims at all um, because none of us had done the proper training for it. Our goal was to have fun and to to try it uh, and and also for me to see it from the other side. Mm -hmm. Um, And also with the pandemic now, um, we, we, we started last and we finished second to last because, uh, at the start line, we held us in the in the background. But you know, when I did the first swim, I, I tried to have the pool boy and paddles and, <laughs> and stuff like that, and I just did like a hundred meters, meters, and then I gave up. 
and then I get to the first transition, and Michael Lemel is standing there with a the camera. And I'm so ashamed that he just laughed at me about, you're supposed to have the poor boy. The poor and it was just floating behind me. That is that is really that's really great. So, but it was fun. So you, you so you did it with your sister, and um, are you glad that that you that you did the race? Yeah, it's fantastic, and uh, it's also you know, I have heard people say it, and I get it when I, I look on people's faces when they cross the finish line. But the thing with swim run is that you can finish last but still have an amazing time and feel like a winner. And I think that's an amazing thing. If you do a marathon or something and finish last, maybe you can you have, you have you feel great when you finish, uh, but maybe, I, I don't know, I haven't done a marathon, but, but you, after a while you didn't think about being in the last place mm-hmm. in the whole heat. Uh, and yes, the, the thing was to do it, you know. Yeah, and d- now you haven't. Is is are you going to use that experience of actually being a participant? And do you think that will affect your sort of planning or your outlook for your next film that you do? <laughs> yeah, that's that's hard to answer. Um, uh, one of the difficult things with the filming swim run uh, is that many races do it for different purposes and. Uh, when you do a race move for Attila, uh, you also you have the obligation to to film the winners then when they cross the the finish line, mm-hmm. um, and you also want to to film people at the back of the field, um, but it's hard to do uh, both at the same time just logistically. Um, yeah. But I try because there are more actually more emotions on the people far back. Uh, than the ones in front, um, especially in the finish. When they go through the finish line, you know the the leading teams. They just ah, oh, it was hard, and then they just like normal. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's not like they're tired. And then and then you have you know if the if it is the world championship and the sun has gone down and, oh, yeah. and you have one of the last teams that finishing, they like crying and they they can't stop laughing and stuff like that. And it's great to have those moments. For sure, for I, sure. I yeah, thought- I mean, I, well, I would just say I think it's important to capture the people in the back because that's where we would be. That's where the low tie boys are. So <laughs> you know, I know, I know we, we chatted after Catalina. It's like, hey, we didn't get any airtime in this uh, in this movie, but uh, yeah. How many? How much? How many euros will it cost for a nice feature? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and yeah, I, but I, but I think in the future the pandemic stopped a lot of things now that we have planned. But I think in the future we're gonna have more movies that focusing on on different teams. Um, oh, kind of like that, following. That's following like a side teams. movie or, yeah. or whatever. So um, a, almost a little bit like a yeah. The, so there's a mini story in in a little bit of the. Of the, yeah, of the film. I, I think that will, will probably be a gr- great thing to do in the future. And I would love to, for other filmmakers um, to do it as well, uh, like make a mini documentary about races who, who does this oh. race or something like that. Mm-hmm. Like that. Um, because there are so many teams across the world uh, that's amazing to follow. And it's, uh, especially now during the pandemic, it, you know, I can't go to france and hang out with a team um before the race or anything like that but it would be great to do that um and get the whole story not just the race yeah right. and we've we've kind of found that out after i mean we've talked to we have how many 30 something episodes now yeah, 30 but all the different folks we've talked to everyone has their own story and every story is great and you feel like oh this is so cool that we learned about this or we we got the story from them and it's more than just, oh, this is the fastest team in the world. That's an exciting story as well. But then there's also couples that race together, you know, brother and sister, f- lifelong right. friends, people that you've never met before except 10 minutes before the race. Like, all these are really incredible stories, which is sort of the, yeah. as we keep saying, like, it's the magic of Swim Run. Swim Run, like, fosters these sort of really interesting stories. 
and experiences for people. And the ability to kind of capture that is, is, uh, is, is good that I see that you're, you're already going that way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's the thing I, I think will be important in the future because when you have done Ute Swim Run seven times, uh, it's easy to repeat yourself as a filmmaker. Um, yeah. So mm-hmm. I think it would be nice in the future to have more pieces where you get to know the ones who are racing. I think your podcast is great on, on doing that uh, because, yeah. because you get the story behind everything. Um, but for Atula, you know, it, it's important to have the race movie and it, it, I'm not saying that we shouldn't stop doing them because um, they are important and needs to be, be done. Um, but I, I think it would be great if more filmmakers actually got involved in this and starting, mm-hmm. started to create things on the side that, mm-hmm. that, that we, we on Atula maybe can't do right now. Uh, because of reasons <laughs> yeah sure yeah i mean there's there's yeah I, th- I think the the opportunities for content are really vast and even even if you think about like just following the world champs like you know we just had george and pontus on the show recently yeah and you know the the i think the perception is like oh these guys are super super elite like they only care about one thing and they're not, it's not going to be dynamic or they might not be like nice people. And at least in swim run, that's always been disproven. Mm -hmm. Um, like everyone we've talked to, like Fanny and Desiree, George and Pont, like everybody, you know, on the pointy end, Johan, um, they've all been so gracious and nice. And I think, I think even, even as, as something to help promote the sport, like that is really important too. Right. Like, Atala and Swimrun doesn't really have a professional class. Um, but, you know, the ones that are professional <laughs> and are, are sort of winning these things, like they're all really, really amazing people. Um, and and to me, I, that was always really surprising. <clears throat> and I mean, I guess now I'm getting used to it, but it's, it's, such, a, it's such a breath of fresh air where, you know, yeah. a lot of sports, if someone's professional, like they don't have time for you and they have to, you know, train 20 hours a week and, you know, no humor <laughs> or yeah. whatever. Uh, so, so yeah, I, I think I think those stories would be pretty cool. Now, we are in COVID. Yeah. <clears throat> we are in COVID, and hopefully, we'll be out of it on the other side soon. But what are your plans, kind of in the f- near and hopefully nearer than distant future, as to um, kind of what races you want it you want to cover and you know, what, what sort of projects you have coming up? Yeah, um, right now, I, I me and uh, Otto Norin is going to do uh, Ute Swim Run, Swim Run Ute. Uh, and uh, hopefully we will do uh, Swim Run Can as well. As of right now, it, it, it looks like it's going to happen that race. Uh, but as with everything right now, we, you don't mm-hmm. know. And then we, we take it race by race and decide what to do. Uh, I can't do every race, so I have uh, Otto with me that takes on the races I can't do mm-hmm. um, because uh, I work also full time as a tram driver uh, here in Stockholm. Uh, I don't know tram in the US. I don't think that's a word. In... No, no, we we have them. It's like a like yeah. an above ground streetcar street or something. Car, yeah, I looked okay. it up. Yeah, San Francisco has some of the oldest streetcars oh, tr- uh, available. Yeah, cable cars. Yeah, cable cars. Yeah, cable car. Yeah, um, but tra- trams are very common in Europe. So I, I work with that full time and uh, uh, <laughs> uh, to work uh, as a tram driver during a pandemic in a country oh. that haven't had a lockdown is uh, interesting. It's uh, special. Yeah. Um, S- like scary. So special. it's hard to to go on races. <laughs> uh, but I'm looking forward to do can hopefully. Yeah, what's what's been your favorite location that you've shot at? That's a hard one. Um, I have loved every races that I have gone to um, for different reasons um, because they are they are all beautiful, and I think Etla is great at finding these places. I have most memories from Cam actually, uh, and I think that's the funniest race visually, visually. Uh, <laughs> hard one to pronounce. Um, 
because Can is like you start on the on two little islands outside the the town, and they go around there, and there there's old villages and farms and castles and things like mm. that, and then they swim across um, to the mainland, and then you are right in the middle of a city and uh, at the Cannes Film Festival and stuff like that. And they go up on the old town and the old churches and stuff like that. And then they go up an abandoned train track right up on the mountain and they go down the jungle and oh. stuff like that. And it, it's so much things on that race that I love. Um, and, you know, I, I went to Cannes um, in 2018 and 2019 and um, on in the year 18 it was sunny and uh, no wind at all and uh, last year it was raining like hell and and a lot of wind so it was the two opposites and so it was great it's awesome nice well i mean the, talk about a peek behind the curtain yeah. i don't think this is i really I mean, Uh, this is the reason why I'm, you know, I'm obviously super stoked on some run and I can speak for Chipper that we're super stoked on the sport. But (laughs) honestly, I think like having these conversations just makes you kind of appreciate every little bit of it. Even Yeah, exactly. Like, like, like I'm going to go back and see these movies again. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Um, So, yeah, I guess we just want to say, obviously, we'll link to the to the movies we've mentioned in um, in the show notes and stuff. But yeah, we really wanted to thank you for coming on and just giving us a little sneak peek into kind of what it's like to to shoot these these amazing stories. Yeah, where can people find your, you know, your quote unquote your your non Otolo filmmaking as well and and then yeah, where's your portfolio, I guess? Yeah, me and my friends have a YouTube channel. That's called film vennerna, which is a Swedish word. Um, essentially, it translates to the film bodies or something like that. <laughs> oh, like the film uh, boys. The f- oh, sorry. Like, like oh, kind of like the film boys. So we're like the low tide boys. <laughs> no, we but we, we we are we are both male and female. Oh, okay. Um, but um, the bodies, like uh, you know, friends. Yeah, the pals. Um, gotcha. Film pals. Film pals. Yeah, that <laughs> might be the right word. Uh, cool yeah so we'll we'll definitely we'll definitely link to that as well yeah awesome yeah but that's a whole different kind of movies <laughs> that's okay yeah and they're good yeah. i've i've seen i've seen that one it was 11 minutes i mean i i messaged you after i saw it and yeah. i i thought i knew what was going to happen and then you 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 juked and jived and you you caught me off guard so congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> kind that. of my yeah. kind of my thing going yeah. the opposite direction of Yeah, else. and it, I was telling Chris before I saw the yeah, again it's called I never well in in English that's what the translation is, but it like it hit me and I was like, "Oh man, this oh, you just feel so so much feelings." Anyway, <laughs> I, I don't want to spoil it for people. Go watch yeah. go watch it. On the film, yeah, on the film pals YouTube channel, we'll link it. We'll link it there in the show notes. And then, of course, if you do see Rasmus and the crew out on on course, no waving, no thumbs up signs. Yeah, just carry exactly. on. Yeah, yeah. good. Uh, if you wave and make a funny face, you probably will get will get cut out of the movie. Oh no! Right, unless it's the sprint or experience race, because that's more of a fun run but if you right. do a world series race and you and you make it's all funny business that's a pro face. tip right there i'm sorry i'm sorry but maybe yeah. that's not the thing for that race that's that's probably why we were cut out of yeah. <laughs> <Catalina>. <laughs> no actually i didn't I, I missed you guys i i was looking for you but i i, I didn't see you at catalina well to be honest we were in the back we were yeah we were in the back and then uh, when Michael shot the cannon off, it took us by surprise. We weren't really, I mean, we knew the race was going to start because we were in the corral, but usually yeah. in, a, in races in the U.S., they're like, there's this huge 10, 9, 8. They count it yeah. down from, you know, you have plenty of time. And all of a sudden, we're sitting there talking like, oh, where do you, know, blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden, boom. 
boom, the cannon goes off, and we were like caught way off guard, and everyone starts sprinting out front. We're like, oh shit, we better get going, and so we. Uh, we and you hadn't put on your shoes or anything. Right? <laughs> yeah, no, we we got caught uh, on that yeah, one. Yeah, that, that's a story now. for a film as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah well, we got, I'm sure we have plenty of them. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Rasmus, again, thank you. Thank you so much for your time and, and sharing your, your behind the scenes, literally behind the scenes of, of all these great films that we have seen and, and the, the fans of Swim Run have enjoyed hours of your, of your work. And uh, a big thank you from, from, I guess, the Low Tide Boys and, and everyone in, in Swim Run. I know your films never disappoint. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to the Low Tide Boys, a Swim Run podcast. Make sure to subscribe wherever you listen to your podcast and leave a review on iTunes if you're so inclined. You can also sign up for our newsletter at lowtideboys.com. That's boys with a Z. And check out our meme page at the Low Tide Boys on Instagram. If you have any questions or suggestions for the show, drop us an email at lowtideboys at gmail.com. We'd like to thank Writing Easy Records for our show music and, of course, our wives for their support and tolerance of our swim run activities, hobbies, and other bullshit we do. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> you can support our efforts on Patreon. Until next time, get out there and go for a swim. And then a run. And then another swim. Then another run. And then another swim. And then run to the finish line. And just keep going until you're done. Yes. or until run to you the, cross or, the finish line. Or run to the car. Or run to your car. Somewhere. Just keep running.